My family never talked a lot about the genocide or even my parents never really talked about living in wartime. And because they don't talk about it a lot, music's been my way of um, imagining what they had experienced. If you visit Armenia and you go to the capital in Yerevan, it's designed around music. All of the streets lead to the opera house. There are all these statues of composers and etchings of instruments into the buildings and music being a way of preserving this culture that was mostly destroyed at the turn of the 20th century. That preservation just continues to be really important, I think, for, for my generation. So my parents got me into music very early on. Admittedly, I really hated it <laughs> for, for most of the time because I think once I moved away from home and I started college where I wasn't being pressured to preserve my heritage, basically where I wasn't being pressured to listen to Armenian music or to speak Armenian in the house, that's when I started having more of an interest to actually explore it. And I think the balance for me then is in music to be really dark. <laughs> but I, I kind of like having time where I spiral down into this little hole and explore things through music that are more difficult to talk about. That really excites me. Both Royce Fabric and I have been really big fans of Adam Agoyan, who's a Canadian-Armenian filmmaker and like obsessively so <laughs> fans. And Adam had given us his blessing to adapt any of his screenplays. And one film that really stuck out to us is particularly relevant to right now is a film called Adoration. It revolves around a high school boy and he is given an assignment at school to appropriate a an actual news story of a terrorist, attempted a terrorist attack, and to try to convince his class that that story is about the loss of his own parents. And it just brings up a lot of bigotry and racism. And to get an audience to care about these topics, you can't just say, I need you to care about these topics and focus on that. People connect with people. So and people start caring about these larger non-musical things through empathy. So if the music I write can do anything to sort of humanize these experiences, then it's successful. If the music can do anything for people in the audience to even relate to the hatred that's being presented on stage, that's successful because there's no way that music could accurately represent what someone goes through in conflict like that and I think that in writing music about it you have to accept that you will never reach that goal um, and maybe that's okay actually to never reach that goal so for me I'm not concerned with whether or not I'm overwhelming people I actually want to because in the grand scheme of your concert experience you're sitting in a comfortable chair you paid for a ticket to be there nothing bad is going to happen to you so you're, you're safe. <laughs> um, so I, I almost think that you really can't push that boundary far enough.